All right, everyone. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and welcome to day four. <laughs> We've made it. Well, one more day to go. But day four of the Daily Creative Challenge for After Effects. It's been an awesome week uh, working with all of you here for the DCC and using an application which many of you have never used before, as you've been telling me in the Discord. So this is really a wonderful opportunity if you've never tried After Effects. You're just trying to get started with things. These challenges will, they're all task based. So they're going to show you common workflows and common things that you might need to do and things that you would typically do in After Effects. And maybe you were just too intimidated to try it. These challenges are going to help walk you through it real easily. And again, if you want some inspiration, you got to see what everyone else is making. So as always, we're coming to you live on Adobe Live, Behance, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope. Thank you so much for joining. I see we've got RB in here, Sean Cassell. Tim, Steve, Felix, Susan, all right, Ferry is back, Murray, Jurgen, Quinn Stevenson, Rick Adams, Christian, great to see you all here. Thank you so much for joining. And we've got Desiree and Corey and Alt990, hey, hey, how's it going? John Lewis and Abidur Rahman, great to see you. Thank you so much. Now, um, before we get started, how and where do you access the stuff you need for the challenge. Well, let's go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna switch my screen over here. And where you're going to want to be or go to is here, behance.net slash challenge slash premiere. When you go there, this is going to allow you not only to take the challenge and sign up for future ones and get notifications, but this is where you can, of course, download the content that we'll be using each day. And these will stay up, I believe, till the end of the week here. Um, each of these has a couple of assets that you can uh, grab and then use to follow along. Now, as I told you all week, you can use the examples that I gave you, but most of them came from this site here, stock.adobe.com slash free. That's right, we have over 50,000 free images, vectors, and videos, which you can use to augment any existing work that you're doing or for the challenges here today. And actually for this specific challenge today around visual effects, I invite you to download and try this out on some other footage. You can also apply the techniques we're gonna to use today to some of the stuff you've already done uh, with some of the edits that you've already made this week, all right? So we got a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of fun things. Actually today is, so yesterday was really the, the hardest challenge of all. Roto brush, and I, I want to showcase some of these towards the end. So fortunately, today's lesson is pretty quick, pretty simple, just revealing a lot of things to you. And then I'm going to be very excited to see what you're going to create and upload into the Discord. Um, so we're going to have a little time to show off some of those submissions. And there have been a lot. I am so impressed and so thankful and grateful that so many of you have, you know, taken the plunge and dove into After Effects like head first and just rocked it. And there were so many great ones that I saw yesterday with Roto Brush. I mean, holy cow, you gotta feel great. You should feel super empowered if you successfully even did, you know, 10, 20 frames rotoscoping, separating a foreground uh, object from the background. That's awesome. That's really great. So kudos to all of you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move over to uh, After Effects here and just check to make sure everything is going well. Woot woot, what's up, Gus? Christine, Joe, nice to see you, all right. Thank you so much, Jason Rose, all right. Space Kitten, <laughs> your Wi-Fi is weak. Uh, sorry about that. Remember, of course, you can always catch these replays. All right. Richard, I haven't used these programs before. Can I join this episode or would I benefit from going to the beginning? Well, these are all sort of compartmentalized, Richard. So you could start today. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Again, these are all task-based things. So it's not, this is not how to use After Effects. This is how to do a task in After Effects. So I'm stepping you through. So you could start today and then go back. And I invite you to do that, okay? Nathan, hello from Phoenix. Oh, hey, fellow Phoenician. How's it going? All right, very cool. All right, let's move on here. So... Oh, and yes, the Discord. Thank you, Tim. So where is the Discord? This is where you're going to want to go to submit your projects, bit.ly slash PR Discord. This is also where the chat is blowing up. You can ask questions, get inspiration. We've really cultivated a fantastic community over there. Um, I just love it. I love it so much. I'm so grateful. All right. Oh, and it's also worth pointing out that for those of you on some of the other channels. And if you want to get involved in the live chat that I'm reading in front of me here, b.net slash Adobe Live, that's where you want to be 
for me to see. Okay, back to the screen here. Thank you, Tim, for reminding me of that. And like yesterday and the day before, we're going to start with a new project. So go ahead and click on the new project icon. All right, and we're presented with this same dialogue as before, new composition, new comp from footage. Once again, we're gonna do what we did the other day, which is, I'm gonna double click on this, navigate to wherever you downloaded uh, your footage for Thursday. By the way, I double clicked inside of the project panel here. All right, you could also go into file import, but just by double clicking in there, this will take you into the file import dialogue. Here's the footage that I uploaded for Thursday, February 11. F enable all accepted files, import as footage. Make sure this box is unchecked, okay? We're not creating a comp yet because I'm going to have you adjust the in and out point on this video again, like we did yesterday, okay? Click open and it should appear right here inside the project panel and you should see a little preview of this. And this is some cool drone footage. Uh, again, Adobe stock, wonderful stuff. Now I'm gonna double click on this video, okay? And specifically, I'm gonna double click on that little quick time icon there which is going to bring me into the footage panel. Now this is going to allow me to A, scrub and play through this, but it's also going to allow me to set in and out points. So you can see this is about 17 seconds. Again, if you want, you can submit something 17 seconds. It's just however long you wanna work on this. So I'm gonna do something a little bit shorter. I'm going to start around three seconds, and then I'm going to set my end point by clicking on this little button right here, set end point of current time. Notice that it shaves off those first three seconds of the video and then scrub ahead to around seven seconds, seven and a half and set my out point. So by doing that, what, what that means is when I now take this footage and I'm going to once again, click on it and I'm going to click and drag this down to the composition icon, which is right here. And notice as I hover over that, it turns blue. When I let go, we now have a new comp and our footage with that specific time range, three seconds to seven and a half seconds, is now in the timeline, is now in our comp, okay? So now we're ready to work. All right, cool. Okay, any questions so far? Everybody's doing well, excellent, okay. Now, actually, now that I've done that for you, I'm gonna go back and just open up my, my project real quickly. I'll, I'm going to reopen this one as well. Here's my little final thing from yesterday, right? So bear with me while I do this again. So we'll be kind of in step as we're working. All right. You might be asking why why am I doing this? Just just because. So I can show a couple of different variations here. All right. Um, I'm very mindful. Of, I don't want you to do exactly what I'm doing. I want you to experiment a little bit. Okay. So today we're talking about visual effects, right? So what do you think about when you think about visual effects? Fire, uh, fog smoke, and then, you know, particles, explosions, sprites. And then there's other elements to that. Maybe there's things like, you know, um, evaporative blurs or, <laughs> or water type effects, or maybe, um, you know, something like adding grain or noise or distortion or warp to a video. Again, just changing the look, changing the aesthetic, changing the feel. Well, we have a whole series of built-in effects and filters that can allow you to distort, uh, change color, do all kinds of really crazy simulation stylization things to your videos, and they're already in here. Now, the really cool thing is you could go through one by one, and if you were in the effects and presets panel, and this is where you're gonna wanna be for part of our challenge today. Um, by the way, if you don't see that panel, as I always mention, I recommend going up to the window menu under workspace, and go to the, oops, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Go to the standard workspace or default. You can also go to effects in this case. You can individually bring up that panel simply by going to the window menu and enabling it here, okay? But more importantly, we have this whole section here called animation presets. And while many of these, most of these, all of these were created quite a few versions ago, what's wonderful about them is one, there's still some really useful things in there, including text animations and other things. Two, by using or revealing these effects, these are just a whole series of effects stacked and saved as presets. So it'll allow you to one, reveal what a lot of the different effects do, break it down inside the effects controls panel so that you can individually see what each effect does and how it affects the other. And then 
this is going to enable you to know, ah, oh, okay, if I want that effect, I'm going to use X, drag it onto your clip. Oh, if I want to do that, it's just this one, drag it onto your clip. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So how do we kind of get an idea of what these things do? Well, of course, we could just drag them over top of our footage and start applying them. Or even easier, if I go up to the animation menu, you'll see that there is an option here to browse presets. And when you choose that, well, it may surprise you because that is going to launch Adobe Bridge. Yes, Adobe Bridge, alive and well in 2021. Now with a lot of new cool video features, you can preview and select video. There's just a whole bunch of new video support in there. But this is where you can um, check out all of the various After Effects animation presets. So let's start with something simple like backgrounds, okay? So if we go in here, now, like I said before, these were created quite a few versions ago. So some of these are kind of dated, but some of them are also still pretty darn useful. So if I start clicking through these, you're going to get this little preview in the window over here. I don't think I can even, I think that's as big as it'll get, because these were probably designed in the SD era. I mean, I know they were. <laughs> This is pre-HD when these things were made. But that doesn't matter because, again, you can apply them to your footage and they'll take on whatever aspect ratio you want, okay? So like this one I've always liked. I think this is a great one, fog lights. You know, some of these, again, uh, useful, but, you know, kind of depends. Lightning, bend, magma. This is always a cool one. Orb, I've used this for a lot of backgrounds, for interviews. There used to be some kind of matrixy things in here. I think those are in some of the other folders. All right. But this is going to give you a visual idea of what some of these look like. So maybe we'll start with something like fog lights. Okay. So let's come back over here and maybe we'll start with this footage here. So maybe I want to add a little bit of fog to this, kind of give this a, a slightly more moody look to it. Now, some of that could be handled via color correction, but let me show you how easy it is to apply one of these to your footage. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to the layer menu and we're just going to choose a new solid. All right. We're going to apply these effects to that solid and then use blend modes to, um, to blend them with the footage underneath. Let's go ahead and choose solid. You can name it if you want. I'm just going to leave it as gray solid. It should automatically take the aspect ratio, the frame size and everything from your video. It should all be there from your comp. I mean, Square pixels, units and pixels. We don't have to do make comp size. It already is. Don't worry about the color. That's arbitrary because these backgrounds will automatically apply color and certain things. The, the effects in there will automatically do that. So again, you could just leave what if it's black, doesn't matter. Leave it as it is. Click OK. All right. So now let's go over to our effects and presets. We're going to twirl down backgrounds and let's grab fog lights here. All right. And I'm simply going to click and drag fog lights and drop it on that gray solid. Now, if I just play this back by itself, that's what it looks like. Okay. It's pretty cool. It's pretty smooth. Looks kind of cool and organic. All right. So now if I go down into our modes here, all right. Now, by the way, there's a little button down at the bottom of After Effects. Let's see this one here. Yeah. See if I can get this on screen. I got to move over. All right. This little button down, oops, this little one here. Can I zoom in more so you can see it? This one, expand or collapse transfer controls. If I uncheck that, note here you don't see the blend modes. If I enable it, it turns blue. Now you see modes and track mats and other things. So if you're not seeing all of those options, enable this button, expand or collapse the transfer controls pane down at the bottom. All right. So now by coming over to mode, I'm simply going to let's maybe go with the screen blend mode. And right away, suddenly it's like, Oh, look at that kind of moody, kind of foggy. Now, again, this is a lot of fog. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on in here. So it's, it's probably going to be a little too much and it's a little too not symmetrical, but it, it obviously, you know, the, the way the light is moving, it's not quite realistic enough. Now, there's all kinds of things we can do to this. The first thing I'm going to do with that gray solid layer selected is I'm going to hit the letter T, T for opacity. And when I do that, you'll see that this brings up the opacity control. Now, we're not going to keyframe this. I'm simply going to drop the opacity of this entire effect. All right, let's bring it down to maybe like 24% or so. All right. 
So already this is looking a little bit better. I don't necessarily love the pattern of that fog, but it's 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 got a mood, it's got a flavor. Maybe we'll actually increase it a little bit more, okay? Now, over in the effects controls, what you're actually seeing is that that fog is comprised of three different effects, fractal noise, tritone, and levels. So that's it. So those three things created the very fog that you see there. Now, just real quickly, I'm gonna turn the blend mode off for a second turn opacity back to 100%. Just real quick, couple of options here up in fractal type. So if we switch these, and by the way, you can play this back and change these as it's playing this, this speaks to our uninterrupted preview and after effects. I like this one dynamic, dynamic twist. This is going to give you all the different types of fractal noise that this thing can generate. All right, strings, subscale. Let's see, what, what does terrain look like? That, that could actually work. It's a little blocky. Notice that there's um, brightness controls here. Let's go ahead and screen that. Yeah, okay, that looks a little too fake. Let's go to um, dynamic. Oh, that's better. Okay, and now I'll drop the opacity. And notice I'm not even stopping. This is uninterrupted preview. So as I'm making changes to the effect, I'm seeing what this is doing, okay? Now you've got additional blend mode controls here. You'll see in fractal noise, but remember that's the blend mode just for the fractal effect. Using this blend mode here, I'm screening all of these effects because they're all on this layer above at the same time, okay? So you can actually add an additional blend mode here just for the fractal noise. So we can darken, for instance, Let's see what my hard light might look like. And it'll just keep playing multiply. And that actually looks pretty good. And you see, it's real subtle. We're just adding a little bit of that foggy flavor to it. Now, again, we can start to play around with things like levels. So if we wanted to add, adjust our midpoint gray here again, just to kind of darken things just a little bit, maybe lift some of those shadows overall. Okay, something like this. Now the tritone is totally grayscale. What if we wanted to make it a little more bluish? We could do that. Let's grab our eyedropper, find some dark, dark blue water here. It's not quite blue enough. All right, just to kind of add again, a bit more of that cool vibe. We've got the really warm sun cooling it off a little more. Maybe adjust the opacity to bring some more of that back in. All right. I don't even know if we need that blend mode. Uh, maybe a little. <laughs> and you can see I can really just start to play around and create weird stuff, okay? So that's one example, that's fog lights, okay? Let's try another here. Let's go back to bridge so we can see our preview. I'm gonna go back to our presets menu. And let's go into image creative. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, special effects. These effects aren't very special. Okay, so this has like some bad TV type effects. All right, I like, kind of like that one, old. So let's twirl up backgrounds, go to be, uh, image creative effects. And let's try, what was that, bad TV, old? Okay, yeah, let's take, check that out. We're gonna drop it on this clip right here, okay? Now that's very, very intense. But again, now take a look at what that entails. Wave warp, box blur, color balance, noise, and Venetian blinds. All right, so the first thing is these waves are, they're, they're too big, there's too much going on there, all right? So I'm going to adjust, I think the wave width is fine. Let's adjust that wave height down to around 10. So it's not quite so warbly, okay? Now, the color balance is what's, is what's causing the, those hue extremes. It almost looks like a hard mix. I don't love that either, so I'm gonna turn that off. So now we've just got wave warp, box blur, noise, which is really nice. So notice it's adding just a nice amount of natural grain there. Here's the before, kind of clean. Here's the after, kind of dirtying that up with some noise. And then the Venetian blinds is giving it that, yeah, slightly TV, uh, UHF kind of look, all right? Real quick, real simple. Again, now we could come in here and we could mess about with a color balance. 
you know, if we so desire, if you're going for, you know, this sort of psychedelic, uh, music laden style, early 70s TV show. But you get the idea. You can apply these things ad infinitum and do all kinds of cool effects with them, all right? Real quickly, real easily. Let's go back to bridge for a second here. Let's take a look at some more. So again, we've got image utilities, nah, not this one. Let's see, um, okay, text. So here's another one, all right? So we have all of these text animations as well. This is an idea for you. Remember, we've been talking about text on a path. Well, we also have animations that do some cool things. I was mentioning some of the blurs and things that we have. So if we do like blur on by word or bullet train or this one here, evaporate, I kind of like that. All right, how it kind of just dissipates, foggy. Again, this one, one might say, was this made in 1999? Jiggy. <laughs> Transporter. Now, again, as you're kind of going through a lot of these text animations, many of these are going to, they're going to feel somewhat familiar because back in the day when these were created, these were used a lot in like TV shows, you know, um, animation intros for commercials and things. I mean, you're, you're going to notice some familiar uh, animations here for sure. This one, Drop Bounce. This one, I'm trying to remember, I think it was like ABC, ABC, NBC. One of the networks used this very same type of effect. 99% it was After Effects in like the early 2000s for, you know, like Tuesday night, you, you can see it. Grey's Anatomy or whatever, you know. Again, you can apply these things and then do fun stuff with them. But more specifically, let's go back to After Effects here. And here, let's go into this one. And maybe we want to, uh, let's add some text to this, all right? And I'm trying to think where would, what would a, a decent path be as we're moving through? This is kind of moving, so maybe the path isn't the best on this, right? We'll go back to this one. And we're gonna type some text here. We've got three minutes. The art of dance, all right? Actually, and I don't need to put it there because I'm going to stick it somewhere else. But before I do that, let's go ahead and apply one of those text animations. So we're going to go into text and we'll go into blur and let's do uh, blur by word. Make sure I'm at the beginning of the comp. And again, I'm gonna drag that onto our text. Spacebar, it now blurs on by word. And if I wanna add a path to that, Remember, I'm going to now select the text layer, grab my pen tool. All right. I don't know why I did it like that, but that's okay. So I'll do that last point. <laughs> Wonderful path, twirl down the text layer, twirl down text, path options. You can see that. Mask one, okay. And now if we adjust the first margin, I can place it where I want. Maybe we have dance over on the edge. But remember, there's animation on there. So when I wind back now, let's twirl this up and hit play. The animation happens along the path, along with all those other effects and things that we've added, all right? Super simple, super easy. So again, animation, Browse presets to take a look at all of these various presets. You can apply them directly here. Now, one quick thing, I gotta show you how to export, but before I do that, specifically with the text animations, if you have your text layer selected in After Effects, notice these little things, they're called FFX, these are the effects files. Technically, you can double click them in Bridge and it will apply that preset to the text layer here. I'm gonna tell you right now, I just did that on a few things with some of these. And it didn't crash After Effects, but something weird happened. So I don't know if there's like a, a little buglet, something going on there. Do that at your own risk. I recommend dragging and dropping from effects and presets. I've had no issue doing that. There was something weird double clicking from Bridge. That's just an FYI, because I ran into it. You might run into it too. And I don't want you to get tripped up and think that After Effects isn't working. Okay, how do we export this? Once again, we're going to select the comp that we want to render in our comp timeline down below. And we're going to go to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. It's going to then send that composition to Adobe Media Encoder in the background. I've already got Media Encoder open. 
And looky there, it's already here. Thank goodness. So you're going to choose your format should be H264. That's the first drop down. All right. And then for your preset to keep it small. And if you're going to upload directly to discord, you got to keep it under eight megs. I'd recommend the medium bit rate depending upon length. You can certainly go for high bit rate if you want. If you're going to embed this from YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook or somewhere else, by all means, do it higher quality. And then the last thing, click on for output file, click that hot text and place it somewhere where you'll remember. So in this case, I've got, you know, new effects on the desktop. Click save. Once you do that, click the play button and it will begin rendering this out to your desktop or wherever it is that you told it to go real simply. So my friends, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. Gosh, we didn't even get to show anything tomorrow. It's a quick one. Even though it's a day off, I'll be here live. We're going to go through tons of submissions from the discord. So have a good rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.